So right here I've got this, this graph of the natural log of x, and I've drawn on here a, a tangent line. And as you remember, the derivative is the slope of the tangent line. And so I just I want to look at this slope for a moment. And if I if I take a point right here on this slope and I look for where it's crossing my grid in about the same spot would be here. And so just by you know, drawing this in here, I've got the slope that's going uh, vertically one and horizontally three, right? Or a slope of one third. That's happening corresponding to this point right here where x equals three. So when x equals three, the slope is one third on this graph. So now what I want to do is switch this up a little bit and I want to take a look at a, at a different point. So if I move this, you know, if I adjust this graph and now I'm looking at the point where x equals 1. So before it x equals 3, now it x equals 1. This slope, much easier to see, is going from here to here. So I'm going up 1 and over 1, 1 vertically, 1 horizontally. So the slope at this point would be 1 over 1. So when x equals 1, the slope is 1, or 1 over 1. One more example to look at. In this same, you know, same idea here, I'm going to look at a point right here where x equals 1 half. Start here, so a little ways up on, on this one is going to correspond to about this same point right here. If I draw on that slope like we did to the others, I can see that I'm going, I'm going up by two spaces and only over by one, right? So vertically I'm going up two and horizontally one, which would give me a slope of two over one. So if we think about those three examples that we just looked at, those three slopes that we've seen, at x equals three, the slope was 1 over 3. At x equals 1, the slope of that tangent line was 1 over 1. And then at x equals 1 half, the slope of that tangent line was 2, or we could say 1 over 1 half, right? So of course this one's 2 and this one's 1. But looking at it this way, it's going to be a little easier to pick out the, you know, the, the rule we're trying to make here. So I can say that at x equals x, that slope will be 1 over x. And that's essentially the rule for the derivative of a natural law. Because remember, derivative is slope, right? And so the derivative of the natural log of x is the same as the slope of the tangent line. derivative of ln x is 1 over x. So this is kind of the, the theme of the problems we're going to be solving right now. Here I have it written out two different ways. Um, some books you'll see it like this. They just say the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. In other books you'll see it written this way, where notice I'm taking derivative with respect to x, even though I have a u in here. So the idea is that u is going to be some you know, expression in, in terms of x, some function of x. So it's as if what we're saying here is that the derivative of ln u is equal to 1 over u, just like we would have said with x. But because I've got a chain rule involved here, I have an extra u prime. And so that's where this expression is coming from. 
that this would be u prime over u if you were to multiply those together. Sometimes it's written like this and you would just have to know, oh, I need to apply the chain rule to this problem. Sometimes it's written like this and it's almost like the chain rule is just mixed into the, uh, to the, to the rule. And that, you know, therefore you just need to plug in whatever your values for u are. So let's try one. Um, here we're supposed to differentiate the function natural log of radical x plus 1. First thing I would do with this is rewrite it. So this first step is just going to be algebra. Instead of having this as a radical, I want to put it to the exponent 1 half. Uh, no calculus yet. Same thing for this next step. No calculus yet. We're going to remember those rules that we have that say that I can actually take this exponent here and move it to the front. So I'm going to rewrite this as 1 half the natural log of x plus 1. This makes for a much simpler derivative, right? So at this point, I'm going to switch into my actual derivative rules. So to figure out f prime of x, I've got the 1 half out in front just as a coefficient. So I'm just going to let it tag along. Natural log of x plus 1, it's like we have u is equal to x plus 1, and then u prime would just be 1 in this case. So if I plug into our rule, I've got 1 over u times u prime, which is 1. And essentially, I just squish this all together. Sometimes you leave it like this. It wouldn't be wrong if you distributed. Sometimes you see it like that. So here's one more example. This one's looking actually really complicated. We're going to use our same techniques as before to sort of simplify all of this. So to start off, I'm going to start with my algebra. No calculus yet. I've got some multiplication here, which I can split up into addition. And then I have this whole piece divided by this piece. So I'll count for that by taking this piece and subtracting the other. So I'm going to subtract this quantity on the bottom, which would be the natural log of 2x cubed minus 1. And we'll do our, the same trick we used previously, putting it to the 1 half power. And these green brackets are just to keep track from one step to the next. Completely unnecessary in terms of solving the problem. Um, I've got the same thing that's going to happen uh, as happened before with the exponents. I've got exponents that can come to the front. An exponent here that can come to the front. So here I would have natural log of x plus 2 times the natural log of x squared plus 1 minus 1 half times the natural log of 2x cubed minus 1. Up to this point, all of this has just been algebra. So let's switch to our calculus now. The derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. The derivative of 2 times natural log of x squared plus 1 is going to be 2 times 1 over x squared plus 1 times 2x. So this part here is the 1 over u from our rule. And this part here is u prime from the rule on the previous page. Same thing's going to happen over here. So I've got minus this time. I've got my 1 half out in front times 1 over 2x cubed minus 1 
and then times my u prime. So in this case, u prime is going to be 6x squared. Again, this part here is my 1 over u, and this part here is u prime. And then we just sort of squish all this stuff together. So I've got uh, 2x times 2 here would give me a 4x for this one. Over x squared plus 1. I guess I should bring down my, my 1 over x. Nothing's just nothing's changing with that one. And then for the last one, I've got um, 6x squared. But I also have this 2 here. So I'm actually going to simplify this to make that a 3, and I'll end up with minus 3x squared over 2x cubed minus 1. Now, in some books, they'll find a common denominator at this point, if you were checking your answer in the back. So they're going to you know, cross multiply all of this stuff by the, the denominator that it's missing. In terms of our quizzes and tests, this is good enough. Just leave your answer in, in three terms like this.